Welcome back to the Midlife Muscle Podcast. I'm your host, Joey Atlas, and today's great guest <laughs> is, is Superstar Brett. Thank you so much for being here. Joey, it's Appreciate my you. absolute pleasure. This is going to be fun now. I'm excited. <laughs> so am I. So uh, as you're tuning in, if you're tuning in on audio, which is Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you're going to want to come check out the video version of this, which is on officially on YouTube as a podcast, because YouTube is serving up full-blown podcasts now, starting from video, to take the shortcut there, to watch us on a video and all the other episodes, past and future. Just go to midlifemusclepodcast.com. That's the shortcut link. Make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications, share it with your friends, your coworkers, even your in-laws, right? Of course. <laughs> all right, so today's great guest, is also another member, a longtime member of the Jim Jacks, right? And we're going to talk about the history of that and the mm -hmm. path that led to that. You're going to want to stay tuned uh, as, as toward the end. Not only is Brett going to enlighten and entertain us, <laughs> but she's going to nominate at least one future guest. Mm -hmm. She's got a big question for me, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to share at least one of your social media channels, mm -hmm. which are also very fascinating. And you're going to learn why they're so fascinating as we get through this awesome conversational interview. So, Brett, again, welcome and thank you. Thank you so much, Joey, for I, having yeah, me. Yeah, my pleasure. I appreciate you being here big yes. time. Yes. So it took us a few reschedules to get yeah. you in here, but here we are. It's here all good. Um, so it's all about the end result, right? Exactly. Exactly. So let's start off by doing a, a quick, simple, casual snapshot sure. intro of who is this lady sitting in that chair right. that this new person is looking at? Five, six sentences max. Okay. So... Age, career... Uh, sure. Where are you originally from? Mm -hmm. Brett Desser. I was born here in Jacksonville, but I was raised in Scottsdale. Uh -huh. I'm in my fabulous 50s. Fabulous 50s. And um, I have been in a gym or the gym business basically since I was in high school. Okay. And, and that's where I, you spent most of yes, your working life. Most of my working uh, life. Uh, up until recently, which we'll get into. There's a Correct. mixture of other things. Okay, beautiful. So, and now here you are back in Jack's for good, most likely, or? Most likely, yes. I'm here in Jack's now. Right. I feel very connected to Jacksonville. Understood. Mm -hmm. Understood. My grandparents are from here ah, and okay. my mom's whole side of the family. So every year we would come to Jacksonville and all the cousins would be together at Jack's Beach every single summer. And I started visiting the gyms in the area as a young girl mm. on day passes. Okay. How young? Um, Early teens? I was being dropped off by my mother. Wow. And nice. walked in. So... The rules were kind of loose back then. It was a little bit. It yes. was a little bit looser, right. Um, but, you know, I went to all the major gyms. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want me to name them. But yeah, you can throw them out there. I mean, Gold's was here. Bailey's right. was already here. Right. And then, uh, of course, World Gym came about, which is one of the legacies I think you're going to get into. Yeah, for sure. Great intro. Thank you. So on that note, let's go to your childhood. So what part of Jack's were you born? Uh, the Riverside area. Okay. And uh, I was born here in Jacksonville and then must have been seven, eight months old. We moved right away. To out to Arizona? Well, we stopped in Kentucky mm -hmm. and then from Kentucky, um, my father was in the army ah, from okay. Kentucky. Then we went right to Scottsdale and my father opened up a private cardiology practice. So he was a, he was an MD? Yes. Wow. Cardiologist. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. So at what age did you find your way out of Scottsdale and what, what triggered that? So I was 18 and my father's side of the family is from New York. My aunt was a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was an inventor of it's like a Seinfeld episode. My mm. grandfather was one of the inventors of the double-breasted three-button overlay coat. <laughs> yes, it's true. Wow. And um, I wanted to follow my dad's side of the family footsteps. 
I was always into fashion. Right. I always wanted to live in a big city and against everyone's wishes, I moved to New York. So with family, like to hang by myself, by yourself, by myself when mm -hmm. I was 18. Near the fan, near, near your family in New York. No, my family was in Great Neck and right. I moved into Queens. Queens. Okay. I got a roommate. Mm -hmm. I moved into a home. I got, I in, immediately got a job in the garment district. Right. Um, especially with my grandfather's uh -huh. name. And then I joined a gym. Which gym? Oh boy. Was it called Olymp Olympia gym or? No. no. Um, it was on, in Chelsea. Yeah. On 23rd street. And it was Dolphin Fitness. Dolphin Fitness, right. Yes. Okay. And after that, it turned to a gym called Steel. Right. But that was one of the gyms I joined. I also joined New York Health and Racket. Right. I worked there for a little while. Nice. Okay. So over to New York uh, in your late teens before you were 20. And how long did you stay in New York for? Stayed in New York for about 12 years. And at that point, I was working for Crunch Fitness. Okay. What, Crunch. Which, what area? What, like what department? 59th Street. What department? Uh, oh, in sales right. slash training. Okay. I was always interested in sales, but I was doing exercises on the floor that everybody was asking me about. Mm -hmm. So the training staff took notice and basically said, we want you to start training. And it was mm -hmm. this big thing, but Crunch paid for me to move to South Beach mm. and open up the gym in South Beach, the Crunch right. Fitness on, on Washington. Right. And that's what really, you know, I ended my career in the garment district. Mm -hmm. The gym business was just where I knew I wanted to be. Right. So, so were you, was there a point where you were doing like full-time work in the garment district and then working nights, weekends in the fitness arena? I was 4.30 in the morning. I was training at the gym mm -hmm. and then I was in an office mm. by 9 a.m. Right. If you can imagine me in an office, I was Whew. with the briefcase, <laughs> executive assistant. Wow. I was getting coffee for the boys, the good old boys. Uh -huh. And to be honest, I loved every minute of it. And ironically, my first boss in the garment district recently reached out to me on Facebook just to tell me because I wasn't sure what direction I was going, right. but he saw that I did go the fitness direction. Right. I still love fashion. I still like to dress nice, yeah. but fitness was where I felt was the best fit. Crunch moved me to Miami. Mm -hmm. um, after I got that gym going, seven years later, grandparents are getting a little older. They live here in Jacksonville. Here in Jacks. The transition was very simple. And uh, what, did it, what did that look like? Went to World Gym, got an apartment near my grandparents. Which part of Jacks? Mandarin. Okay. Got an apartment by my grandparents mm -hmm. and got a job at World Gym. Which department? Training, sales? Training. Both. Okay. So that worked smoothly. No problem. Mm-hmm. Right. Worked at Bailey's. Now you're around 30, in your early 30s by then, right. right? Okay. So obviously you got the Bailey's chain. Were you doing any work for them at any, any points? Bailey's training. Okay. So there was a training company and they were in Bailey's right? and then they went to world gym. So I basically went with the training company where the training company was going. Okay. It was a lot different back then. Yeah. Um, having a training company was a huge deal. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's normal. You go into gym, this is the training company, right? But having an actual company and we're wearing shirts right. that have our, that's huge. Mm -hmm. No one had really ever seen that before. Right. Right. So it was and very then, new back then. Right. And then Great Core Fitness mm -hmm. opened up. Right. One of the larger Brett 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 Chepnik. Chepnik. Yep. Mm -hmm. I worked for Brett. Okay. I had a lot of good resources, positive influences mm -hmm. from people in every city I went to. Mm -hmm. But that's learned right. behavior, I believe. I, believe I don't so believe too. anybody can just go somewhere and start pulling resources. I think 
you have to work at it. Yeah. Just like anything else. Right. You work at it, it gets done. Right. Right. It is a skill, social skill. Some people have it naturally. Some people mm -hmm. have to develop it if they want it. Right. Some people don't even want it. Mm -hmm. You surely had. That's how you and I started talking. I was like, I could tell this lady's energy. Uh, just like. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Yeah. My pleasure. I, I sensed a lot of goodness and openness there. And there, I just, I could tell there's some cool stuff inside this lady that needs to come out. And Definitely wanted to welcome you to the gym. And I do like to sometimes do that because right. the gym jacks is one of the most amazing, one of the most intimidating right. places. It can be in can, intimidating. Right, yeah. to somebody right. just walking in. Sure. So I just try to make sure, listen, I have a smile. My parents paid for the braces. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure we use it. Right. And just, why not? Yep. Yep. That was easy to see from the beginning. Oh, thank uh, you. That's so sweet. Yeah. My pleasure. <laughs> You're one of the reasons, part of the equation, why I continued to come there after I helped my friend for the first really? few months. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I tell the story in Ashley's uh, interview episode when she asked me the question, how did I think of doing this? And right. where did the idea come from? Right. And I tell the story from the beginning. I, I have a full training set up at home. I was training at home for years. Right. And I've been in lots of gyms from when I was preteen, thanks to my dad back in the 70s. Um, and a friend, a local friend of mine asked me if I can help him. He's been after this stuff his whole life. He's like, I just don't feel like I have the structure yeah. that I need to feel like oh, I'm good. I'm on, I know what I'm doing and the results are showing even more now. He said, can you help me? Can you help me get this right once and for all? And he's, he's in, in his fifties like us. I said, all right, we have to train together. It's the only way I can help you. We train together two months. You're good. So he said, all right, can I get your membership and you come train with me at the gym? Mm -hmm. I said, all right, I, I, I've never been in there. Uh, I've seen a few mentions of it, whatever. But yeah, if that's where you train. And this is at Jim Jack's? Yeah. Okay. I said, that's where we'll do it. So Drew signed me up that day. Darren, my friend, turns around. He said, hey, I just signed you up for a whole year. I said, oh, all right. I'll, when, I'm, when we're done, I, you know, maybe I'll come maybe I won't I didn't have any intention of staying there for a year mm -hmm. but this is how God talks sometimes right right so I'm saying ah oh, all right God I got you a year so I'm focused on Darren for the two months uh, get him to where he needs to be he's good to go and by that time I'm starting to like cross paths with Argon you like people giving friendly head nods, a couple of people mm -hmm. coming to talk to the me. The crew. Yeah, even Vince and uh, Beverly. Bev, they, you know, hey, we see you're doing you look like you know what you're doing there. Thank you, I appreciate that. I didn't know who they were until I found out. So the vibe was good. Mm -hmm. I was like, this place is kind of different. I like it. So I hear you, God. I got, I'm, I'm going to keep coming here. And so I just decided I'm going to train there most of the time. I still do training at home once or twice a week, depending on schedule or what have you. Uh, but again, this is how God throws seeds in front of sure. you to take those steps. And so that's why I'm going there. This it's a unique place. It's, it's a, it's got a great vibe. It can be intimidating. However, once you kind of get in there, you realize, all right, there's nothing to be as afraid of. There's nothing to be scared of. There's a lot of good people in here. It's a lot of good energy. Correct. At least, the times we go during the day. For sure. We'll talk about the night crew another time, maybe. Oh, or not. <laughs> or not. All right, fair enough. So, so. Actually, I'm sure there's wonderful people that work out yeah, there at night. Yeah, it's just it's busy just, and it's, it's not much our busier. time. Right, exactly. We're morning people. Right. You're either a morning workout person or you're an evening yeah, workout person. Yeah, understood. And it is what it is. So, in your 30s, back in Jack's, working in gyms, getting your own training in and sticking to the lifestyle. Um, how did you, so let, give me the pathway into the gym jacks. Give me from where we're at in Mandarin at world gym into the gym jacks. Well, the gym jacks was world gym. It was a world gym. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so how did we you get went, there? Because our training company had the training, training at world inside. gym. Okay. So was it all locations, world gym and jacks? Yeah, but it, right. But it started at uh Bailey's okay okay so it's was one company that started at one gym and mm -hmm. then went to another okay then I left that company 
and I pulled clients from Gold's, I pulled clients from Bailey's, mm -hmm. I pulled clients from World, and I said, I am going to be opening up my own spot mm -hmm. or training at my own spot somewhere different. If mm -hmm. you want to come with me, this is when I'm going, this is where I'll be. And where was that location you were in? That for? was on Southside Boulevard. Um, there was a gym called Snap Fitness on the corner. Mm -hmm. Next to Snap Fitness was a studio. Mm -hmm. And they said, we will pay the rent for the studio if you can bring the people in and then we'll pay you per person. And that's all I needed to hear. I had a line around the building, mm -hmm. cheer, the cheerleaders, mm -hmm. you know, baseball players, football players. I did abs classes. I did BOSU ball classes. I did honing in on body part classes mm -hmm. before anybody really started doing that. Right. And then I also never used a mic. So I wasn't standing at the front doing the exercises with a mic on in a mirror. You were moving around the room. I was facing my people, letting them see themselves in the mirror. Mm -hmm. I never wore a, a, a sports bra. Mm -hmm. I never let my abs show. Mm -hmm. I always let the focus be on the students. And honestly, I really think they loved it. Right. I would come around and lay on the floor. If, if you know, Susan wasn't doing her abs right, I would just lay on the floor and, and just get down there and help her out. Right. But by not working out with them, I was able to give them that one-on-one -on -one attention. And then from that, some people wanted to train one-on-one -on -one with me. Right, of course. Um, basically, my father got ill and I went back to Arizona mm -hmm. and I ended up getting a training job in Arizona and ended up meeting the director of operations for Major League Baseball. Mm -hmm. He started training with me. Then I started doing meal prep for him. Mm. And that's kind of how my working with athletes started. Okay. And that was, so, it, but based in Arizona was where you were doing that. Because my father was there. Right. All right. So from there, how did, how did you find your way back to Jax? Um, what led you back to Jax? My father passed away, God rest his soul. And, um, I wanted to come back where I felt connected. Right. So I gave up pretty much everything I had in Scottsdale once everything went down with my dad. Mm -hmm. And then um, I came back to Jacksonville where I felt connected. Mm. Um, when I did that, there were some things that transpired in between there yeah. that made me feel that there was something else calling me. Mm -hmm. And I had a best friend who was very ill around the same time as my father. And so with the passing of my father, my best friend falling ill, she loved butterflies, I loved butterflies. It was just almost a natural progression that I was watching what was transpiring in the universe and it was like a push and I still had a couple individual clients mm -hmm. here in Jack's in Jack's and I would train them at their house when I would come in town and, and things like that. Um, but I told them, you know, this is it. I'm not going to go back into training. For now, mm -hmm. I need to give back to the universe, mm -hmm. um, and that's what I'm doing. Okay, so those of you watching, those of you listening, we're, we're, are we speaking specifically of monarch, the monarch butterflies? So I, monarchs are what I do raise them from egg, yes. Right. But as far as where I live, my ecosystem that I have set up, there's all sorts of different butterflies, but okay. monarchs are what I raise from egg and what I am um, certified as an educator to go to classrooms and speak to the kids 
and the teachers mm -hmm. about the importance of the monarch and how we can all do our part to save. Right, so it is endangered, yes? Endangered species. Endangered species for sure. This is year four endangered. Okay, and like what would, if I was to say to somebody, oh yeah, Brett does this and this, she's a, what's? So I'm a landscape designer by trade. Right. I install everything from butterfly gardens to pavers. Right. But my specialty are butterfly gardens and sustainable gardens, which would be fruits and vegetables and butterfly garden all together in the same. Right. So <laughs> I'm going very slowly here so you can hang with us. So as you've heard, she's gone from the whole fitness realm, right. sales, training, uh, very deep into it to this uh, life revelation and you know, I call it God laying out some seeds in front Without of you. Without a doubt. To take light shining on the path. This whole butterfly world opens up to her. And we're talking about this because I can tell you right now, <laughs> it's what she does. But until I, what do we call the planter that's at my parents' house? Um, that is a pollinator planter. All right. So my mom recently uh, had a heart attack and pneumonia, major, major. God and, bless. And as uh, mom didn't pass away, she's got a second chance. Thank you, Lord. We're working through mm. that. Brett says, hey, why don't we put together a pollinator planter? Pollinator planter. And I'm like, what, 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 what is this? What do you mean pollinator yep. planter? It's the butterflies, the monarchs. We're going to, you'll have the caterpillars. They'll go into a J formation. They'll create the chrysalis. <laughs> You're talking about J formation. I'm like, like J what? formation is this a sport or something? <laughs> So I was like, all right, I'll, I'm going to see everything in real time. So I was like, all right, cool. Let me know how much. We'll do it. Sure enough, we got the pollen, planter, plant, pollinator. You got the planter. Planter pollinator. <laughs> you got the planter. You got the caterpillars. Got the caterpillars at my mom and dad's house. And I knew at minimum, even if my mom wasn't coherent enough to understand what's going on, eventually she will be. But mm -hmm. dad is very fascinated with this stuff. Like he'll watch Nat National Geographic, he'll watch animal videos. Right, and uh, seeing on, on, it live. Yes, right. So I knew he'd appreciate it. So we get, uh, there were there were five, are they called monarch caterpillars? Or yeah. They are. Okay, mm -hmm. so five monarch caterpillars yep. in this special planter, which has the plants that they eat mm -hmm. to continue to grow and transform. They do go into what's called this J formation, which means they'll hang under a leaf or one upside of those. Upside down J. Upside down J, J formation. And literally, one day it was within three or four hours mm -hmm. that it went from a caterpillar hanging upside down to a chrysalis. And it's like, you can't believe it <laughs> un unless you witness it right. with your own eyes. Some people never witness this their entire life. It's like, wait a minute. Right. And you know, like you say, all right. God's got some real magic. Right. And that's just a little bit of it right there. All right. So now this caterpillar becomes a chrysalis in a few hours and it's become, it's going to become a butterfly. But here's, here's what's even more fascinating. The head of the caterpillar falls <laughs> off. You can see it underneath there where it goes into J formation. The head and then of the caterpillar. The butterfly inside the chrysalis grows a new head. Grows a new head. So when I saw this, and yes, you explained it to me, it was like, oh, I got a great article that can relate to people trying to tr trying to evolve into their new self. This oh. is perfect. You following me? Yeah, evolve. You got to lose your head. You got to lose your mind to, to, to gain one. a new mind. All right. So that's that article okay. has to come. If you want that article and possibly a video podcast episode to match the article, make sure you go to midlifemusclenews.com. That's where you can get the free newsletter. And I am going to write something about this this fascinating phenomenon yeah. that yeah. we witnessed in real time. So this is what she does. She's got, she knows how to grow fruit and veggie gardens. She knows how to do landscape landscaping, design. landscape yeah. design. She knows how to run the cruise to make it come out perfectly. Yes. Um, I'm not going to say much about the butterfly ideas you have, right. cause I don't want to give away too much just yet. Cause I am working on the people that have been supporting me from dynamic fitness powered at the gym jacks um they are so passionate i wanted to put together a a, a t-shirt and, and a logo um celebrating not just the monarch but the people right. that are so 
passionate about it yeah, like me. Supporting it. Like, supporting yeah, I it. get it. I see this. This should so keep going. So I came up with something and Joey, of course, came <laughs> up with something as well. <laughs> and together we came up with something. I mean, should we say it? Yeah, we could. We're, you, it's, it's technically we say it together. Yeah, nobody's going to go run off with it. Okay. The monarch, monarch mafia. mafia. It's the monarch mafia. Yeah. So we're doing MM Monarch Mafia. I'm going to make some T-shirts up. I want to take the money from the T-shirts and literally what I do as far as the landscape design, Joey, is the bread and the butter. Yeah, that funds the right. other stuff. The butter, right. So the money I'm taking in from anything to do with butterflies or the Monarch Mafia goes right back into the business. Right. It's a labor of love. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. so you, you see, you've been given the special vision, the revelation. Uh, and so there are four years right now considered an endangered species. species. Yes. And what that means is the next step is extinct well, unless something's done about it and so this whole thing you do is, hashtag save the monarch is an effort to save them right hashtag right? save the monarchs so if one if every person got one plant of food and put it outside the butterfly would smell that plant and lay the eggs but what's happening is that there's not enough plant because of all the quick construction and pesticides. Right. So just like a human, a butterfly will be flying in the air without anywhere to lay the eggs. And unfortunately, again, no eggs, no like caterpillars. a human and the butterfly will get sick carrying around the eggs that she's not able to. Amen. This is another reason why I'm a big advocate of organic foods, organic farming, oh, yeah. clean, uh, clean agriculture. I mean, this because it affects so many different things. Let's just we can say Monsanto, right? I mean, sure. it, yeah, it started. That's how it has started. But now it is just it is seeping into so many other aspects. Mm -hmm. um, when I tell people to check their fruits and vegetables, a lot of times the wrapper will say made in USA or put together in USA, but what's inside the wrapper is from another country. The fruits and vegetables from other countries come in with bugs on them that are not indigenous to this area. Right. We do not have enough manpower to take our police force, it, more agriculture police, to stop every shipment right. in the port. Those bugs are coming into our system, getting into the crops, and I know farmers personally that tell me that they can wake up in the morning and a, a certain beetle from a certain country has mowed through mm. half of their family's income for the next right. six months. And there's really nothing that can be done about it. Right. Who, so yeah, the who, monarchs. Who, who can they blame? We need to make sure that we have enough of them with the bees to pollinate. So right. a lot of people don't know the monarchs pollinate all the way to Mexico, just like the bees. Mm -hmm. So, gotta be careful. Right. Now you have to stay healthy too. Yeah. So I'm, I'm still the health nut. Right. And I'm mixing it up with the monarch mafia. And they're, they're definitely related. And my, and my landscape design definitely. Yeah. Um, it's the health of our environment. If we can't live so in a healthy important. environment, what are we, what are we taking care of ourselves? So important. For? It's, all, it's the holistic environment. After Everything. I made a change in so many people's lives. I was thinking I must be able to do this on a different level. Right. So we're taking care of ourselves on the inside, mm -hmm. right? And yes, our body externally, but also our external environment yeah. that we live in, breathe in, eat from, stay, stay sustained with, right? And all those different animals and critters that are part of the ecosystem. Monarchs are the focus here. So this is beautiful. So we're going to share where you can learn more about actually right for for now what's that movie uh, is a flight of the butterflies oh flight of the monarch flight of the monarch okay. flight of the monarch it is it's still yeah i think relevant. you can rent it on on prime video for two dollars or something okay 299 maybe yeah something like flight that. of the monarch flight of the monarch if you want to learn more about this it's and, such a simple watch yeah simple watch not too long flight yeah. of the monarch just write that down bookmark it i'll try to share a link in the newsletter as well 
Uh, but we're also going to share at least one or two of your social medias sure. where you s share f so, uh, photos and updates and I do. You get you take plenty of photos and little video clips of. I do of the butterflies yeah. and um, of certain flowers. The and of me and my friends mm -hmm. staying fit at a certain age. I don't want to hear excuses from people on, <laughs> on that soapbox now. Right. There's just... Understood. There's just no excuse. No. No, no, no. And like, we're experience, experiencing this with my mom in real time. And it's, oh, I look yeah. at this very objectively. Oh, yeah. It's not like we haven't told her over the years. Mm -hmm. If you do not take care of yourself, okay, it's one thing for you to sacrifice your body, not look good, not be your best, but you are going to be a burden to those around you. Ooh. Your loved ones are going to suffer loss of time, loss of energy, stress, mental, emotional, physical. It's a toll. It's a big toll on everybody around you. So taking care of yourself, while it may seem selfish mm. at first, it is the most unselfish thing you wow. can do. Because everybody gets the best you. Write it you. down. Write, it, Write down. it down. I've said it before. I'll keep saying it again. And I know she gets it because she's a living example I of do it. get it, Joey, and I appreciate that. Amen. Pleasure. All right, so let's let's roll here. Training schedule. What is your... Give, give the person who doesn't know you a snapshot of your weekly training schedule. Just the framework. Like Monday I do this, Tuesday I do that, or whatever. Whatever it looks like. Every day is a cardio warm-up and a stretch. Okay. Every day meaning seven days a week mm -hmm. reason being is because the days that i take the rest day are the days that i get stiff the most so i always try to do at least something mm -hmm. i do wednesdays and fridays i do heavy legs okay the other days of the week i split it up i do shoulders i do back and butt on the same day so i do back and glutes on the same day back glutes same day so it's like the back shoulders get their own day shoulders do get their own day shoulders get their own day because shoulders day is my ab 300 day okay. i have a special pilates ab routine mm -hmm. that is three sets so of shoulders and the ab, shoulders ab and the ab routine okay. and arms get their own day um buys, tries. buys and tries are together okay and chest and chest i do push Every single time I leave the house, I do 20 push-ups. Okay. Before you leave. Every, I mean, if I'm running the store, oh, right. I'm late. Got to do push-ups. <laughs> right. So because I'm small framed, right. I have found that I don't need to do too much heavy weight on my chest. Right. Um, because I do want to stay feminine up top. Yeah. So the push-ups and um, even the pull-ups, I do that. Uh, every day or every couple of days. Right. Basically, I do bands and weights every day on something. If I look in the mirror and I feel like something else needs to be done, I do it. If I don't, I don't. Mm -hmm. Speaking of frame, what's your height? What's your current weight? So I am 5'6", and I am tipping the scales at approximately 124. All right, that works. Well earned. Thank right. you, Joey. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, do you like you get outdoors? Like you do nature hikes, bike rides, beach walks, anything like that? I do do things like that, um, but I am nine months meniscus surgery. Okay, that's right. I remember and before the meniscus surgery, I had seven other surgeries on the leg. Save that. We're going to get to that. So today? Is, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, boy. oh well, today, but so. Brett may be back for another episode or two in the future because yeah, 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 yeah. way about too many stories about to fit into recovery. This. Right, right. And what I learned from being around the athletes and the kind of recovery that they are forced and force themselves to do. Right. It's part of their career. Yes. Recovery is a major piece. Recovery of it. is a huge business, Joey. Oh, yeah. It's getting bigger, it's, too. Yeah, it Especially really is. for us 50 and over crowd. Mm, I, feel, I feel for you over 50s. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's, let's do a quick snapshot of the nutrition framework. Like what's a, if somebody says, describe your nutrition approach. Not the crazy detail, but a framework, look at it. Yeah, general. Mm -hmm. Well, I go by what I used to tell my clients, and that is write stuff down. I don't need a nutritional label. By writing it down, you see what you're putting in your body. And I'm not 
not on a phone, on a piece of paper. True. You're, I'm doing checks and minuses. Yep. I'm doing highlights and I'm doing red checks. I'm doing smiley faces just like a little kid. Right. Um, Old school paper, pen and paper. Pen and paper. Yes. I'll do a um, high fiber carb protein breakfast. I'm not opposed to eating chicken for breakfast. Mm -hmm. I learned a long time ago in fitness that if you want to get it in the right foods, you sometimes eat omelets for dinner. Right. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. We call I that breakfast high, for dinner. Exactly. Yep. I do high protein, low, low to no sugar, um, low simple carbs. Mm -hmm normal complex carbs so a complex carb is going to be a, a sweet potato right a simple carb is going to be a white rice um but i try to get in rule of thumb is one gram of protein per body pound so if okay. you think about how much protein that is i just reach for the stars yeah i try to eat as much as protein as i can right if i have to roll up some lunch meat at midnight because mm. i woke up and i'm hungry right. i'll do that yeah. So, so anybody listening or watching on the video, midlifemusclepodcast.com, keep in mind for, for purposes of context, especially with some of the other guests, physical output of the people in this chair with me, the physical output is high. These are not sedentary people. I'm not sedentary. It's very likely you're not sedentary. And if you are, you're probably working on changing that. So that protein is earned like this, a, a, a a gram per pound is not something that a couch potato should be doing. And and I don't think they could. Right. I'm not sure they could oh, get Some of them do that. it. Some of them do, do they it. get all that protein in? Some of them they just develop such appetites that they're they're overeating protein, overeating carbs, overeating fat. That's part of the addictive cycle they get into. I get excited to eat certain foods now because I know I'm feeding. And well, here's another thing. I'm feeding my muscles mm -hmm. and I have now learned and my family has learned about I'm not basing my day around where we're going to dinner. Right. I'm going to eat dinner regardless. Right. If it's in a little Tupperware container in my truck, I'm still going to eat dinner. Right. So let's focus on something else. Yeah. Let's go see the sea turtles be born or. Right. So what, yeah. what she's saying is a problem that a lot of people suffer from. Social eating. They just focus on social eating mm -hmm. as their lifestyle. Yeah. Like, and it's, you consciously have to make the effort when you're ready to transform yourself and evolve. That's one of the habits I have to break. I cannot default to the people who surround me into their habits, which is, oh, we just finished lunch. What do you want to do for dinner later? That's so true. And another thing is the food shaming. And I talk about this with my friends, the food shame that we get from even the people that love us that do not understand <laughs> right. why we're not going to eat that. And why at that time yesterday, maybe I ate it and maybe today exactly. I'm not. Right. Yesterday and was a treat day. Yeah. We're just going to loosen up. <laughs> right. So, you know, I, I'm, starting to wonder why there's so many people concerned about what all the healthy people are eating. Maybe they should. <laughs> be more. Well, that's a whole other dynamic of I mindset guess. and, and projection and shining the light on somebody by the habits you're employing and exhibiting. They see, Oh, they're doing everything. Right. right. Well, well, why, why you don't have to do that all the time? Well, no, I, I want to, yeah, I don't I, have it, to, I want it's a to. lifestyle it's a choice. This is mid, you know, this is midlife muscle. This is, this is a lifestyle. So midlife muscle, again, we're going to repeat. This is not just the muscle of your body. This is the muscle of your mind, completely. your spirit, your completely. soul, everything so that you have full strength in all areas of your life. So important. All right. Hence the play on words here. Okay. Good stuff here. So let's go to, all right. So here's a good question. All right. Okay. So since we've developed a friendly connection, um, you, you shared your appreciation for genuine, authentic Italian food from your time in New York with the Italian boyfriends and such. You found out my mom and dad cook. I brought you some stuff. Yep. You're blown away. And so I've bringing you, been bringing you some other things. When you eat these delicious spelt apple delicious. muffins. The apple ones are my favorite. Yeah, they're good. They're the softest. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's because apples hold the most water. Yes, there's good moisture in there. So my question is, when you're having those, like tonight or yesterday or whatever, Morning. do you displace another carb to allow that carb to fit in or no? No. 
Okay. I allow myself to eat a piece of that muffin if I feel like it, Joey. Right. Because I've earned it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you have. This lady well, earns it big no, time. No, but every that's day. what I'm saying. Right. In my mind, that's what I'm going for. Right. I'm not nickel and diming myself. Good. Absolutely not. So context: these muffins that uh, we have my dad making. My dad loves to cook. They're Mom delicious. Does too. So, and he likes to experiment and, and he's open to suggestion because they grew up old school. Organics were kind of new to them, even though they were, oh my they, gosh, were, they yeah. used to do organics originally back in their, really? you know, like Italy and Brooklyn, they would grow their own stuff. They wouldn't use, but they wouldn't chemicals. use the word organic, would they? No, no, it was just, it was they organic. They just the weren't word. using right, the word. Right, right. Now we get into natural. like America. Remember it was called yes, natural. No pesticides. They yeah. would keep the, the chicken wire and the screens yeah. around it. So. Now this whole organic movement comes, my parents, you know, they're not really in tune with how our food supply is being industrialized and, you know, everything's Invaded. being treated and, and just not what it used to be. So we, we, we've been teaching them what organics oh, good. are and what organic means. And they've made a huge transition over the last, I don't know, eight years. So now my dad's baking these special healthy treats. So we're, he's got, we, we make I sure he gets all the so organic much. stuff, <laughs> right? Organic apples. Uh, I got him using the spelt flour. Love now. it. Okay. Uh, organic coconut sugar. So he loves it. He loves seeing the reaction from people because he can only eat so much of them, right? So he loves seeing the outcome. I got him the the, the non toxic silicone the muffin. The silicone twistable mu muffin, muffin tins. <laughs> tins. He yeah. never made a silicone. He was blown away. Like he I'm loved, blown away. Right? Man, these come out so good. Everything just knocks right over. Out. Yeah. And so Brett's been eating some of those because dad's like in high Thank gear you. mode and i put on a couple pounds i'm not gonna lie yeah, you, but it is, what it's, it is it's good pounds it looks good it is, healthy what it is. Pounds. oh you're so sweet. so she's been eating them I and have it's been fitting right into her weekly schedule breakfast they're not monster muffins they're kind no. of reasonably sized i'm good for a pop off the top and then a break in half of the bottom perfect i treat myself for the first one you know right. the top yeah yeah the, muff, the top yes so if you want the recipe, make sure you go get the free newsletter, midlifemusclenews.com. Dad's got some fine tuning and tweaking, right? On the recipe, like we're trying some different things, less uh, butter, but I'm, they're good. No, I'm not saying that at all. I love every one of them <laughs> equally the same. We're going to share the recipe uh, probably in the next few weeks. So go, to, go get the free newsletter because that's where I'm going to post it. All right. So without naming any name brands, do you take any kind of supplements, powders, anything? A ton. Okay. So... Let's start from the top. Multivitamin, multimineral. Nothing multi. All right. What do you, what do you take? Everything individual. Okay. So you're taking you, a lot of different individual yep. things. Okay. Uh, I think I counted on the other day, 14 different things. 15. Um, in the morning, I do the collagen. Um, in the coffee, I do collagen pills. I do biotin. I do amino acids. In fact, I brought them with me to make sure I took them. Mm -hmm. I do um, a turmeric and pepper for swelling. I do a lot of glucosamine and chondroitin for your joints. Oh, Joey, yeah, I do it all. Okay. I, I, from A to, okay. up to zinc, I pretty cover it. A lot of stuff. You mm -hmm. ever use any protein powders? Protein powder, so every day I mix. Plant-based or whey? Um, I usually do plant-based, but it just depends okay. what's, not, what's a good deal at the moment. Right. I like plant-based better. Okay. You need your pen? No, I'm good. Okay. Very good. Um, I'm in the flow here. The protein I do with my creatine with an apple. After training? After training, right towards the end. So like my body knows it's coming, my body knows it's coming, then yay. Right. And so you want the sugar and you want the protein. And then I do the, a little bit of the creatine. I just started creatine this year. Okay. Um, and then I do Celsius in the morning. That's pre-workout. That's plenty pre-workout for right. me. Sure. I stick with organic Italian espresso for my pre. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Joey Banana. Joey Banana's in the house. All right, cool. So in a, in a few sentences, like I know a, a lot of people ask me who are like, they've you know been on and off and they've been off for a year, off for six months. They're trying to get back on. They're like, you're, you're, you, 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 I always see you as being on track now in adulthood because I, I ha I've had my moments in the past, peaks and valleys, bad phases of life, divorce uh, that took me off track big time, mm -hmm. like way off track, um, like where my, my vitals were actually being affected. Right? Bad, Mine too. Bad numbers. Okay. 
in a few sentences, how would you describe to somebody, how do you stay on track? What keeps you dedicated and committed? The pictures, the All pictures. Right, there you go. Okay. So I was 37 pounds, 37 to 42 pounds heavier when wow. I got back to world gym. I'm sorry, the Jim Jacks. The Jim Jacks. Dynamic Fitness. So you were like 150 I have pictures, something. One, about 150. Okay. About one, yeah, I bet I was about 156. And that must have not felt good. It felt different. Mm -hmm. And it was because of different reasons, right. mostly because of what had happened with my father. Sure. But um, I have pictures of Drew and I, and it's just amazing. And what happened was is, I put on the weight and then didn't go to the gym because I didn't want anyone seeing me when I didn't feel good about myself. Mm. So I pulled myself up by my bootstraps and I went into a yoga class where everyone accepts you for exactly who you are. Mm -hmm. And through yoga, I was able to come out of my sad little puffy shell. Mm -hmm and just start grinding again. Right. That was it. Love I it. saw a picture of myself. I was surprised. And that's it. I just took it into, I got it back into control. Right. So at this point in your life, looking toward the future, are there, is there anything that continues to inspire you, motivate you, keep you focused on any kind of bigger prize or reason or I stay motivated because I am grateful. Amen. And grateful I for your life. Can't think of really that's another big. No, reason. That's it. I, I've I've mentioned this in the recent past and in other episodes. We're not crying or, today, right? No. If you hey, it happens. Trust me. Gratitude for your life is like showing the Lord, hey. You made me. I appreciate the miracle that you've created. I'm going to take responsibility to take care of this temple. That's That's the ultimate gratitude. And I want to give back because I was given a second chance, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I also had some people in my life that were so supportive and I knew that I could in turn show them something and mm. actually you know now they do the whole butterfly thing too it's just you know mm -hmm. great turnaround for everything Love it. good stuff okay what if there was one biggest setback maybe you just mentioned it what what was that setback and how did you get back on track was it the loss of your father 2006 i had a um major car accident mm. and I was in the hospital for six months and they told me I probably wasn't going to be able to ever run again and definitely didn't don't think you're going to be squatting again and I just remember saying okay well that's just not me I know I'm going to be the one that's different and I insisted on going to a physical therapy physical therapist that worked with um athletes mm -hmm to make sure I, I was pushed as hard as right. I could be. Beyond the normal person right. going to rehab. And they did that for me. And um, they took mm. care of me. And- uh, Was that in Arizona or New York or That Jax? was here. Jax. That was when I came, when I first came back. Bad accident. Highway or where, where was no, it? No, it was on, I fell asleep at the wheel. Mm. It was on the corner of San Jose Boulevard and Old St. Augustine Road. Mm. There were three different cars that year that took that turn in the rain and crashed and i was the only one that survived wow and they have in turn changed the signals over there mm -hmm. because there were these three accidents right when that happened a lot of things happened during that time and then it kind of snowballed but that's that was my setback and so while you're hearing these things from the, the, the doctors and you're in the hospital, mm -hmm. you're already thinking, no, I'm, I'm going to work at coming back from this. Of course I am because I now have the manager of Gold's Gym coming to my hospital room every single day and letting me know 
I can do it. Mm. I still, there's still people that want to, will want to train with me. Right. That I'm lucky I still have my legs. Yeah. I have, again, that support system that if I didn't have, oh, and by the way, the food, y'all, mm. the food, the struggle was real. Mm. I couldn't eat a lot of the hospital food. <laughs> <laughs> so here's surprised. everyone from Gold's Gym coming in. Bringing you the goods. And bringing you the goods. Mm, that's that's awesome. Wonderful. What a blessing. Totally. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's big. Awesome. All right. Um, have you ever had a training specific injury that was big or? Uh... No, not, to, not specific. I mean, my meniscus needed surgery because every time they went in this leg to do the other surgery from my accident, they went through my knee. So this was mostly accident related. Yes. I had to clean it up. Exactly. Oh yeah. This is not, I'm careful at the gym right. and I might be there for two hours. Yeah. I can see that you're careful, but I mean, you're never going beast. When mode you're at dynamic stuff. fitness slash gym jacks, it's more than a workout. I'm there for the support. Mm. I'm there to be supportive, give support, Learn, right. watch, uh -huh. and be a part of something that has been and always will be important in my life, and that is fitness. Right. And people that keep it real. Yes. Fab fit fun friends. Nice. Speaking of fab, so let me rewind here. You heard um, you heard Brett mention Drew before. Those of you who haven't seen Drew, he was on a few episodes ago. He nominated Brett to be on. I was waiting for the day so when there's going to be a person. I, I didn't want to ask you directly. I want to see who's going to nominate her. Oh, that was nice. Sure enough, it was Brett. It was I, Drew. It's fun. Yeah. So, uh, so Drew nominated Brett. Uh, if you haven't seen Drew's episode, go back and watch it. All, they're all good. They're all there's there's little nuggets and little revelations and bits and pieces in all of them. So. Just take your time, work your way through them. Make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications, both on the videos, the audios, so you don't miss any of these. Cause we, I have at least at minimum, a dozen people already lined up for the future. Oh, and that's everyone's, without, everyone's that's without people it. being nominated. Met right. somebody else today who we've only been passing, making a head nod occasionally. We start talking today and I'm so glad like I broke the ice cause she's going to be an awesome story. Kay. I knew it. Um, her name is Rachel. She's going to be coming on. Rachel, you're probably watching this because you and I spoke today. You're the one. Um, and I, I purposefully, I stop talking to people once I get that initial conversation because I want stuff to come out in real time here when we're talking. I don't want to learn all the good stuff right there and then come here and hear it all again. I want, I want to mm -hmm. hear it like the audience hears it in real time. So much of what you shared today. I haven't asked, asked you specifically in, in the gym or via phone because I wanted to hear it today in real time. Makes it more special. So go back, watch Drew's episode, watch the other episodes. Um, and before we get to who you're going to nominate, your question for me and your social media channels, uh, I'm going to ask, is there anything else you want to add before we, we get to that? Um, not really. I mean, right, I, so here's a question. I, I love being here. <laughs> here, like here? Yes, I love being here. <laughs> the, I mean, the set is great, Joey. I, I love you. what you're doing. I can't wait to ask my question. What were you going to say? All right. So everybody's loving the set. People who see this are like, ah, oh, that's pretty cool. You whip that up pretty fast. If you want to hear the story of how this all came to be, because I had zero plans to do this because I had enough going on in a previous podcast going anyway, go back to watch the first episode where I interview Ashley. She asks me the specific question. How did you come up in, with this idea and start it? It wasn't me. It was God lighting the path in front of me. And you could hear the whole story back in Ashley's interview. Um, here's a question that just came to me. And this is based on things that you drew me like, you know, like planting seeds. Give me, do you have a crazy story? 
that you could share without one? like putting anybody <laughs> just one i know you said you have a lot but let's do one today a crazy story it, about what 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 john what subject something i don't know like here's something bizarre that happened at the gym jacks two years ago you know whether it's a a love drama or a steroid story or well you know you can't talk about any of those things because i've been sworn to secrecy on all that okay and that is the truth <laughs> Um, so there's a lot of that that has gone on. No, absolutely not. There's none of that that goes no, on. I don't know course. anything about that. I don't Zero. get involved and I don't want to be involved. But I mean, a f I mean, there's a lot of crazy stories. I mean, you don't have to name names if you have one. Like you could just tell the story. I mean, stories like being in the gym and how after work we used to all sit in the parking lot and drink Sparks that energy crack drink mm. but with the liquor in it uh -huh. um that is outlawed now by the way wow um we used to have a lot of luau's okay the gym jacks's world gym was a little wild right it was a little wild okay. it was um a lot of after hours uh-huh a lot of after hours stuff right um a lot of luau's a lot of barbecues uh-huh um a any, was that all fueled by Bev and, and Vince? Like the was that? Well, Beverly wasn't around okay. yet. Okay. Uh, Vince was married to his first wife. Right. Um, but Vince was a manager at the time, so it was just a completely different atmosphere. Right. Than it is now. Um, but I mean, I rem you know I remember us you know, coming into work still with the grass skirts on and the <laughs> and changing the bathroom and, you know, to going, start the next morning, just going about our business and training like, people. Listen, everyone got trained and nobody got hurt. Okay? Right. 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 Understood. <laughs> so oh, what was I just thinking here? I had something. It was fun. How often do you, do you get hit on at the gym? Is it how often do I get is, hit is on it sporadic? Yeah. I like, mean, I think that there's always going to be people that are interested right. in talking to certain people. Right. I try to be nice to everybody, but there are days when I have to force myself to stay in the zone and right. sometimes not able to smile and take my earbud out. And it's never personal. And in the flip side of that, I also do not take it personal. Yeah, yeah. When someone no, does I know, I could totally see that with you. Like sometimes you and I walk by each other. We don't even like say anything. It's not personal. It's not though. personal. We're there to train. And then exactly. sometimes we'll talk and I'll be like, Everything, all, right. all like, the great stuff that comes from the gym is all like bonus, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah. It's all bonus. Yeah. I'm there to work out, but you know, I'm also there to have lunch with Drew. Yeah. And right. um, actually Drew has been a huge has been a huge impact on me and my diet. Um, stopping and having lunch with Drew before I finish my day mm. um, has helped me put on some good weight and nice. keep my keep my spirits up. Good, good. Yeah. All right. So no obvious men hitting on you on a regular basis. On a regular basis? Every now and again? Uh, maybe, all, maybe I, mean, some... all the t I mean, some people try to talk to me, but I just take it as a compliment. Understood. Men, you, you, women, you're able to put it into we're a all better perspective. Of course. Yeah. Cool. Of course. I like it. Good stuff. Um, all right. So let's let's get into the end part of this. Okay. Who is it that you're gonna uh, gonna nominate for a future episode? How many people can I nominate? You can nominate a bunch, but I need one today. Okay. Let's start with one. I'm gonna nominate somebody that I'm not sure will come on. Is okay. that yeah? Yeah, we'll try. And then I'm gonna, I'll nominate somebody else maybe yeah. that will come on maybe? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. I wanna nominate Gail Ellie. And for those of you who don't know who Gail Ellie is, she is Dexter Jackson's amazing wife. She's a gem. And the reason why I wanna nominate her is because I'm not sure Gail realizes how much influence she had on me and all the other little girl trainers running around Bailey's. How long ago? 
in the, when we were at Bailey's. Right, so we now were, we're talking. See, now the reason why Gail should be on is making sense. Go ahead. Because we were all running around watching what Gail was doing. Mm. Gail was competing at the time. She, bodybuilding? Bodybuilding. Oh. Her and Dexter. She always took the time to show me different things. And when I would be staring at her, she wouldn't like think I was a weirdo. Mm -hmm. It was just, I was so taken aback by her personality. Yeah. It was not. She's a sweetheart, like a pure sweetheart. So that's not the average right. woman bodybuilder Correct. persona. Right. But she's a very busy person. Yeah. Grandkids. And she kids. also will probably want to throw Dexter in there <laughs> and get it off her chest. We're going to save him for the future. For sure. Um, well, then I have three other people to nominate. So you just want one today? Yeah, well, hold that, hold that thought. So you heard her. Gail is Dexter's wife. Those of you who remember the initial episodes, I told you Dexter was part of the inspiration for me hearing the voice of God speaking about doing this podcast. Tell, and does everyone know why though? And because he's at the, he's at the gym every day. You know, he's at yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I told the whole story so when Ashley asked me. I lay it all out yeah. from, from start to finish. So I met Gail. She came in maybe two months ago. I didn't even know it was who she was. I never mm -hmm. met her. But as soon as I saw her like in my periphery by the desk, God tells me that's, that's Dexter's wife. I was like, yeah, I know, because you just told me. I totally get it, like without even speaking to her. So inside the gym, Dexter introduces us, and she's like, yeah, I heard, I heard a lot about you. And like, she, I, she was the sweetest lady right from the get-go. It was You could tell it's genuine. Like that's, that's Oh, she's, that's she's a doll, and she, even to this day, when I try to compliment her and let her know what she's done for me, I honestly don't think that she believes it. She's, or, she's modest. She's humble very yes. like bit brass tats yes. just old southern just, yes yeah all right so so we'll talk about that is how, my, so that's my nomination that's your big nomination so we'll talk about how we might be able to get her on to share the the, the valuable stuff that is the fabric of her life up to this point so we make sure she understands why she has stuff to share well she's been through the good the bad and bad yeah. and the ugly and yes. then she comes out on the other side. Right. And here's something else. Being the wife or a girlfriend of a professional bodybuilder, which I was for years in New York, it it takes a certain type oh, of yeah. woman. Yes. This is kind of like rock star without the instrument. Right. And um, the way that you carry yourself is a huge reflection on the person that you're with. So yes. you have to be very mindful of that. And she does that with the utmost eloquence. Yes. Yes. So anybody new just tuning in, whether it's audio or video, just go search Dexter, the blade Jackson to give you context on who we're talking about. Uh, Gail is his wife. That's who Brett is talking about. You mm -hmm. guys are pretty close. They have a long history together. That's who we're going to try to get as our first nominee on a future episode. Who would you say might be a second if Gail can't make it yet? If she can't make it yet, because in the future she might do it. Okay. This is a couple, Joey. Now, I, have Bring you ever it. done a couple? No, or but Or how I'll shall I say, have you ever had a couple on the show? <laughs> bada bing, bada no, boom. No, but it's an idea. I just have to figure out the mic situation. But go ahead, because we could break them up. We could do one and one or possibly figure out the mic situation to get them Misty both and Scotty Jackmore, the owners of Fat Cat Tattoo. Okay. Who belong to the gym. Right. They both have individual stories and then now they're together. Are they in during the day? Every day. I've seen a few Not people. Not every day, but you know, in, during the week. Okay. All right. So they got good stories to tell. Journeys, like personal journeys of ups, downs, challenges, and- Very much so, very worldly, right. very God, very God influenced mm, and- Nice. Misty and Scotty have played um, a large role in my journey as a person, to be honest. Love it. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. Maybe, maybe we're going to allow all your nominees to get on, not just one. Can we'll I get say one all. more? Yeah, bring it. All right. My final nominee, and it's last but not least, she's <laughs> right. last but not least, Understood. is a new friend of mine, and her name is Shakira. Okay. You um, met her at the gym, somewhere else. I did meet her at the gym. She is a perfect example of don't judge a book by its cover. Mm. She also has a story way deep in there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people that would, by first sight and first meeting, she's the type of person that you would not think, oh, she probably had, had it easy or her whole life because mm -hmm. she's hot or whatever people feel. Um, au contraire. Okay. And she has shared her journey with me. Mm -hmm. And she's a great chick. Okay. Let's... And she keeps it real. Okay. So, Joey, you if know. She's up for it. These are my people. Yeah, no, I get I it. I mean, yeah. Um, we'll get Everyone it. wants to come on <laughs> Midlife Muscle, baby. <laughs> I'm loving it. I guess so many people like, yeah, count me in. And they, they've go. never done this before, but they're all, they're all. Joey, I've never it. done this before. I know. <laughs> I've never done it before, and I'm about to get an after hour show up here. I love it. So, okay. So let's try to talk to all of them get them on the schedule if they're up for it and if they want to talk to me see your episodes see the previous episodes whatever we have to do to show them that i this, will let them know they're nominated is, yes it's about them but it's about helping other people who are on the other side of the camera looking for something looking for inspiration looking for somebody coming out you, of the dark you, darkness you of their meet, past you have to meet scotty you have you must all meet right scotty. if we're in there together introduce us next time if i can't eyeball him okay all right okay so your question for me turn the tables here we go I want to know what made you pick up and move to Florida? Ooh, beautiful question. So uh, growing and, up. I'm sorry, split question. Mm -hmm. Who and what did you leave in New York? Right. So as a, as a kid growing up in New York, I loved New York. Great friends, great family, lots of good times. Um, but I could tell at a young age, I didn't care for the cold uh, once I realized what it's like in Florida during the winter. <laughs> All right, so so I was maybe 10, was spring break, my mom, my aunts, and us kids went to visit a family, like they're like family, we went to visit them down in Fort Lauderdale. They moved from where we were in Westchester, New York, down to Florida. We leave New York, I don't know, it's like 25 degrees, or snow, it's nasty. We get down to Fort Lauderdale, it's 78 palm trees swaying. You're sold, huh? I'm, and I'm like 10. I get off the plane. I'm like, I want to live here like them. I'm going to live in Florida when I'm an adult. Okay. And that was it. So I was hooked on the idea. As the years progressed, I would get like the real estate magazines, homes and lands, whatever. And look at them. Ah, oh, look at these places in Florida. The yeah. Home prices. The just, just, you know, like staying in tune with it and, and interested in it. And as the years progressed and adulthood came around, um, the way Jack's became the specific location in Florida was uh, met a college friend in Buffalo, SUNY Buffalo. Mm -hmm. He happened to be from Rockland County. We became good friends, very close. His family had an offer to have their business purchased by a company down here in Jack's. And the family would move down as part of the deal and his dad would run that division. Okay. And so... They were moving during a uh, holiday break while we were in college. So we were, we were going to be home for three or four weeks, like December, January. Okay. They asked us, would we drive, help them drive the cars down okay. during the move? I said, yes, count us in. You guys can hang out down there. So I thought Jacksonville was in North Carolina. I didn't realize there was also a Jax here in Florida. Oh. Right? So, <laughs> so we leave New York, 7 in the morning. It's freaking freezing. Like freezing, 17, you're on camera, 17 Joey. degrees. We drive straight down, my friend and I. We got like two cars. Uh, I think there may have been a U-Haul in front of us or back in back of us with somebody else. We get down here at midnight uh, to Bay Meadows area. Midnight, same day, drive. We get down midnight. We get out of the cars. It's like 72 degrees. Mm -hmm. And it smells nice. It's like you can so feel, you came here for the weather. You can feel the warmth. I'm you like, came for the weather, I, the smell, the palm trees. And they said, "Look, go to sleep. You ain't seen nothing yet. This is Bay Meadows. It's great. 
we're going to go out to Ponte Vedra where we have the house. Uh, it's, you know, there's some work being done on it. Tomorrow we'll go there, you check out the beach. So the next day we go to Ponte Vedra, we check out Sawgrass, we go to the beach. And I was like, all right, this is it. You guys are gonna be living here. I knew okay. my friend, I knew my friend was gonna be moving down. Nice. Because the family was there. And so that was it. Started focusing on Jacksonville areas, okay. properties, uh, neighborhoods, communities. Well, welcome. Thank you. And so since 1999, I've been here. Good moved to have down. you. Thank you, appreciate it. I love it, I love it here. Love it here. It's, it's an awesome place. Uh, in so many different ways. And mom and dad just moved down about a year ago. Mm -hmm. You know that. So that was my journey to okay. Jax. What was the other part of the question? That. Oh, who'd you leave there? Oh, so when I came down, it was just me, my first wife at the time, and my, my two older kids. They were like, okay. I don't know, one and So now you're with the second two one? Two and a half. I was. Okay. So that was another stepping stone. That's another show, folks. <laughs> it's another show. We'll That'll cover be on the, my after the, show that we'll previous be wife, <laughs> Yes, right. Previous wives, divorces, uh, grateful for all of them. Everybody's cool now. Okay. Everybody's courteous. Uh, like, I'll we'll get along. So you'll be here for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At least part time anyway. Like I might okay. go get a country house and Sounds do good. my farming and stuff and then come back to the beach certain times of year. I'll help you with the farming. There you go. I know you got the knowledge. Um, so, yeah, that's 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 right. So everybody stayed up in New York. It was just me, my friends, and their family that was down here already. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just me who made the first move out of all my family. Um, and, and I was okay with that. Like I knew a lot of them were stuck with their, their roots of New York. And but that's okay for some people. Yes, exactly. It's I not, was like, this is cool, it's cool not for, for you. It's not, totally not for me. Some people don't regulate on the weather, you know? Right, understood. And so it was just, I, like I just uh, that this is my home like I should be down here and that, you know it was like I needed didn't need to think about anything else and then you know two and a half hours you guys can come visit I'll come visit you holidays will come up but it's like get on a plane you're there before you know it and gotcha. if you want to drive you could drive you know it's an easy east coast drive for some people all right then all right so let's get into the social media channels which ones do you want to share well, uh, Instagram. There's, it, there's two. My Instagram is I speak butterfly, all one word, lowercase. I speak butterfly, all one word, lowercase. No spaces, mm -hmm. no underscores. Nope. I speak butterfly. That's the Instagram. And yep. what Facebook else? is my name, Brett Desser. Very simple. B R E T T D E S S E R. That's Brett correct. Desser on and Facebook. I am not locked in to social media on a daily. Right. So if you friend request me, be patient. Or, Please, yeah. just a little bit, yeah. because then one day I'll go through and accept everybody and like everyone's stuff. <laughs> but um, yes, I try not to spend too much time on social. Understood. I will. I do not post my landscaping design for many reasons. Intellectual property. But if when I do consults, of course. I show different pictures to people that are interested right. in what I've done in, in the past, some awards I've received and things like that. Um, but yeah, I speak butterfly and Brett Desser and yeah, go connect with her uh, at least on Instagram. Um, and I'll be doing butterfly garden, little butterfly planters, the pollinator planters, hopefully for Valentine's day. Okay. Hopefully the eggs are abundant and we'll be hatching. So definitely reach out for anything you're interested in. If you're in Jack's, Connect with Brett if you're remote and you just want to see what this lady's up to and how she's trying to make an impact on the world in many different ways. I speak butterfly. Thank you, Brett Desser. This and is who's awesome. to say I don't get back into training? You just never, you never know. know what you never can know. happen. No, you, know? you never know. You A can't rule it out. private clients, I wouldn't mind it. Understood. All right, so private clients, possibly training in the future. If you're in Jax, she can help you. All I right, can. so that's it for this episode. Make sure you leave your comments below if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, if you're listening to it on Apple, Spotify, wherever, please rate and review it. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. And until next time, peace and much love to you. We'll see you on the Bye. next episode. Thank you for tuning in. Great work. Appreciate you. Thanks, Joey. <laughs> yeah.